Okay. One second. Another spot. Okay. And we will have recordings uploaded to our our YouTube channel. And uh, then I will translate that into Chinese again. 我们今天的这个讲座也会提供回放，所以如果你想要提前离开的话，也没有关系，我们可以在CCTalk上面稍后可以进行提供一个录像的回放。嗯，Now, uh, uh, let me introduce my teacher. I've taken a lot of workshops with her, and I have to say she is the person who helped me the most and inspired me the most on my calligraphy journey. And I'm sure you will enjoy her class as much as I do. So without further ado, let's welcome Nina Chen. Thank you so much, Olivia. Thank you everyone for joining us today. It's evening for me and it's morning over there in Beijing. So I don't know where you are, but good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I'm gonna start with sharing my screen. I have a little presentation prepared for us. So I'll go ahead and share. 好,Nina先会问我们,嗯,进行一个一小段的一个关于英文书法的一段演说. So welcome to, uh, I'm going to call this a mini boot camp because that's really what it is, but uh, we're going to be doing some copper plate drills together, but I'm going to call it a mini boot camp. 今天可能是一个微型的小课堂,我们会进行一些关于控笔训练方面的一些练习。well, I'm I'm Nina Tran, and uh, I live in Los Angeles, California, and I have lived here for over thirty years. And this is Nina Tran 老师，她现在居住于加州的洛杉矶，她已经来美国超过三十年的时间了。I teach calligraphy. I teach all sorts. I teach. Pointed pen, broad pen, and also just regular monoline, including copper plate, Spencerian, fracture, gothicized italic, uh, monoline foundational hand, and italic and flourishing. Uh, Nina Chen 老师，她教平尖字体、点尖字体和一些单线体的现代字体。她所教授的课程包括铜板体、啊、uh, 黑体字，还有一些单线体的意大利体的课程和一些拉花的课程。I started copper plate in 2015, and every year I would make some small progress, and uh, for the first Two, three years, I was really focused on learning uh, sort of the more standard copper plate. And then towards 2018, I wanted to explore the dimensions of copper plate, the different variations of copper plate. 嗯, Nina 老师从二零一五年开始接触英文书法，然后他觉得每一年呢，他都有一些小小的成就。在二零一七年以前，他是。专注于古典的铜板体字体的学习，在二零一七年以后呢，他将铜板的古典的铜板体呢，呃，在各个维度上进行了不同的探索，包括一些拉花和一些其他的变形现代体的一些尝试。And this year, I wanted to do a lot more explorations, so I just played a lot with copper plate this year. 嗯，今年他在铜板体上呢，有了更多的一些创新的探索。I want to introduce. It's hard for me to talk about copper plate without introducing some of the biggest influences in my script and who people who helped me to learn. 嗯，对他来说，在他学习铜板体呃的路上呢，有一些非常重要的老师对他有很深的影响。他今天必须要在此啊、呃、感谢一下他们。This is Dr. Gail Madalag. She lives in the Philippines, and she was actually the person who introduced me to copper plate. 嗯，这是 Gail 博士，他是一菲律宾人，他是最初介绍铜板体这个字体给妮娜老师的。She is the one who actually introduced me to copper plate drills, and I didn't know what that was until I found her, and she was telling me, or she she taught me what they were. So here are some images of her doing some drills. 
嗯，是嗯 ，Gal 博士呢，把控笔练习啊、嗯、这个概念介绍给倪拉老师的。然后这些图片呢，是当时在跟嗯这位老师学习控笔练习的一些照片。Another major influence in my great uh journey, I guess, is is Dr. Joe Vitolo. 啊，另一位对尼拉老师产生很非常重要影响的老师是维托洛博士。I think that everybody who learns Copperplate or Grocer Script knows who Dr. Joe is, or has gone to his website, Scenarian.com, or has watched his YouTube videos. 嗯，他想说，如果你接触到铜板体或者 ES 这个字体，那你一定会对维托洛博士有所了解。或者你也曾经访问过他的网站 scenarian.com， 或者看过他关于铜板体练习的一些视频。And Dr. Gale was the one who introduced me to Dr. Vitolo. 嗯、um, ，刚才的那位那 Gale 博士是介绍妮娜认识维托洛博士的。And these, I have two friends, Andrew and Judy, and they weren't necessarily my teacher. But I did feel that they were my mentors, and in the very beginning, I had no idea what I was doing, and I found these two wonderful people who invited me to their study group, and for maybe a whole year, we studied in Grocer Script together. 嗯，这里另外两位朋友，一位是叫 Andrew， 还有一位是叫 Judy。他们可能并不是传统意义上 Nina 的老师，但是他这两位也是对 Nina 在英文书法上帮助非常大的人。他们在二零一五年创建了一个学习小组，在这个学习小组中，他们互相帮助、互相学习，嗯，铜板体的这个字体。And like Dr. Joe Vitolo, these two people taught me how to analyze my script. How to give myself critique, and they just taught me how to pay attention. 嗯，这两这两位同学和这嗯维托洛博士一样，嗯，对于妮娜来说有非常深的影响。他们教会了妮娜怎么样，嗯，去检视这个字体是否规范，怎么样自我检查这个字体的书写是否正确。And then a year later, after I started copper plate, I had a copper plate fever, and I took as many classes as I could. And this was before Zoom, so these were the all the classes that were available to me that were here in、uh, Los Angeles, I think, except for Bill Kemp. But anyway, I taken a class with Paul Antonio, Bill Kemp, Barbara Casalari, and Pat Lair. 嗯，在二零二零一六年的时候呢，妮娜对于铜铜板体有着非常狂热的一种热爱。她先后嗯、呃，从师从于这几位老师，他们分别是 Paul Antonio、Bill Kemp、Barbara 和 Pat Blair。他嗯，基本上都是在洛杉矶本地啊、呃、当面授课的。那是在 Zoom 授课这个形式流行之前的事情了。Uh, my favorite resources are the Zenarian manual. There are a whole bunch of lessons and examples <coughs> you can find there. And also, I consider this my copper plate or engrosser script bible, the Zenarian manual. 对于后来的学习呢，有一些嗯资料也是参考资料是非常重要的。对他来说，在那手册是在英文书法上的圣经。And you can find a copy of the Zenarian Manual on David Grimes's website at <coughs> www.mossgrimes.com. Um, 在那手册的 PDF 版本，你也可以在 David Grimes 的他的网站上看到。他的网站是 www.dsgrimes.com. Hey, before we get started, we should probably define what a boot camp is and what copper plate drills are. So, a boot camp is just some kind of intense training, and copper plate drills is、uh, we're just going to repeat a sequence of strokes and or letters. 嗯，在我们开始今天的讲座之前呢，我们需要先定一下什么是 boot camp。boot camp 是一种，呃，集中式的一种训练营的方式。然后 copper play drills， 呃，这样的一些控笔练习呢，是对于呃相同的一些笔画或者字母的一些大量的重复性的练习。
And some of the benefits of doing drills is <laughs> fluency and uniformity to develop rhythm, to improve your spacing, to help you develop a critical eye, uh, to also break down your practice instead of trying to learn everything. You just learn one little bit at a time. So it's small steps. Uh, it also helps you improve your letter forms, and it also helps you gain confidence in your work. 嗯，对于控笔练习来说呢，它是把一个很大的练习分成非常非常小的部分。<笑>不好意思，嗯嗯，它能够帮助你提高你的间距，提高你的字形，并且能够帮助你的眼睛形成对于字母呃规范的一种审视。所以它嗯，这个控笔练习是一种好处非常多的一种呃练习英文书法的学习方式。Usually, I I teach two bootcamp classes. I teach a minuscule and a majuscule separately, and usually those are eight hours long each, and we only have two hours or less. So we're gonna do our best to to do some some of the drills that we do in a regular bootcamp. And Nina 老师她嗯平时的那个 bootcamp 的课程呢，一般来说小写是八到十个小时，大写是八到十个小时。但今天我们只有一点五到两个小时，所以呢，他会尽他所能把这些课程当中的精髓在今天展现给我们。So to make the most of our time, I have to assume that you are ready to go, so that you're familiar with materials. You know how to use a pointed pen. You know how to dip your ink. You know what paper to use. You know how to position yourself at the table. You know the proper angle of your paper, and that you more or less know how to write copper plate minuscules and majuscules. 嗯，对于今天来说呢，倪老师会假设我们已经对于通班体的字体有了一定的了解，然后对于我们应该用的，嗯、呃，用的工具，我们应该用的纸张，然后我们应该怎么样蘸墨，我们书写的一些位置，我们怎么样拿我们的笔，还有对于通班体或者 E S 这个字体的字形，一有了一个大致的了解，在这些知识的基础上呢，我们才能更更好的进行今天的讲座。So here is what we're going to do. We're going to do a quick breakdown of the rules, just so we're all on the same page and we're all following the same rules. Because with copper plate, there are so many different styles and variations. Then we're going to just do a little warm up, and then we'll do some copper plate minuscule drills, and then some majuscule drills, and then the last thirty minutes is for a Q and A session. 嗯，对于同班体来说呢，它有非常多的字形的变化，所以呢，一开始它会对我们，嗯，对于这个字形先有一个定义，然后我们进行一些热身的一些，嗯，书写练习，然后再进行，嗯，小写字母练习，大写字母练习，在最后呢，会回答大家对于今天讲座的一些问题。Okay, so hopefully you got the handouts and you have all of the materials list. So I won't have I won't have、uh, Olivia translate all of this、uh, unless you want to. Olivia, it's up to you. 嗯，对于今天的这些呃所需要用到的一些工具和材料，我们在之前的、呃、已经给大家下载的讲义上面已经都有详细的介绍了。So before we get started, I like to have these little mo motivational speeches, and I think that when we do something like a boot camp, I like I said, it just breaks down the the bigger picture into smaller pictures, I guess, and and we can instead of having these really lofty goals that seem impossible, I think that、uh, doing drills helps break those、uh, bigger steps into smaller ones. 嗯，控笔练习呢，能够帮助我们在学习同班体这件事情上呢，化整为零。嗯，从你迈开的一大步来分成非常非常多的小步，这样呢，使我们能够更快的提高我们自己。And finally, everyone here is on their own journey. Everybody has a different idea of what they want to do with copper plate. Some people are super super serious about their study. They want to become master penman, and others just want to write a nice letter to their grandma. 
嗯，对于我们今天的与会者来说，我们可能每个人学习的目标也是不一样的。有些同学他可能对于英文书法非常非常严肃、非常认真，他们可能希望成为 master penman。但是对于另外一些同学来说，他们可能只是想写出一些好看的字，给自己的、嗯、奶奶、外婆来写一封信。And I, I don't know if you have to translate this, but I just really liked it. And I, it says the only freedom which deserves the name is that of pursuing our own good in our own way, so long as we do not attempt to deprive others of theirs or impede their efforts to obtain it. I just really like that quote. 嗯，这个在屏幕上的字呢，我就不翻译了，大家可以自行理解啊。反正大意就是在嗯。就是每个人对于自己想要追寻的事情，会有一些自己的方法或者自己的理解啊，大家自己理解一下吧。Okay, so let's start. 好，我们要开始了。Okay, let me. Um, can we spotlight my desk, Olivia? Or maybe it already is. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's start with some basic rules just to get everybody on the same page. 好，我们先来为大家讲一下这个嗯铜板字体的一些它的基础规则。I'm just going to line these first lines, and then I I won't really line them anymore after this. So I'm just using a ruler to mark six lines. 嗯，现在先用尺呢，在纸上画六条线。嗯。Okay, I'm going to start with this middle space, and this is going to be our x height. 我们从中最中间的这个开始，中间的这一行会成为我们的嗯呃 x height 行高。This line on the bottom is the baseline. This is the waistline, and this is the first and second ascender line, and first, uh, first and second descender line. 嗯，先我们先定一下这几条线的名字。在 x 这条线的下面这一行呢，是我们的基线。嗯 ，x 的上面这一行呢，是我们的腰线。再往上呢，是我们的第一第一上回环线和。第二上回环线，下面的呢是第一下回环线和第二下回环线。And there's this extra line that is slanted, and that's just our main slant line, and that is at 55 degrees. 嗯，这条斜线呢是我们是我们的斜度线，它的角度是五十五度。And our letters are either going to be within the x height, so like an A. So basically. All of the letters are going to be at different heights, depending on well, depending on what letter it is. And usually, if it's a letter that has a loop, it usually goes all the way up to the second ascender line. Some letters like T will only go up to this line. So just pay attention to how tall the letters are. 嗯，每一个字母呢，它可能高度都不一样，所以我们要注意的是，这些字母它们为嗯，它们坐落于哪两条线之间。And some letters will also come down below the baseline, like the letter P or a letter J. So again, just pay attention to how tall the letters are. That's all. So I'm gonna talk about the capitals. Most capitals are three spaces tall. 大写字母呢，大多数的大写字母，它们一般来说都是占三个行高。And there are a few capitals that have descenders, like a J or a Z, or some variations of G and Y. And they have descenders, and these letters are five spaces. 嗯，有些大写字母它们是有下回环线的，比如比如说像大写字母的 J 和 Z， 对于这两个字母来说，它们占的是五个行高。And uh, let's see, I think that's pretty much it for the rules. I'd really like for us to start 
writing, I, I did include some more rules in, in the handout. Um, 我们现在对于这个字形的基本规则呢，就先讲到这些。在我们的讲义上，我们可以看到有些更详细的规则，但是今天时间所限，我们就先暂时把规则定义到这边。First exercise that we're going to do is we're just going to warm up our hands and make sure that we have good ink flow. So I'm going to use two spaces for my warm up. 我们的热身练习呢，只是要啊把我们的手先热一下，然后确保我们的那个墨水的流动性。所以在这边我们先用的是两倍的行高。some straight lines and hopefully you already know what paper angle that you uh your pen and paper should be so i my pen my paper is at this angle uh 可能你們已經知道了,嗯這個紙張對於身體來說的角度,所以對於我來說,我的紙是向左邊轉的是剛剛屏幕所示的那樣一個角度正對著我的身體。OK. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to pull some straight lines from this top line and this bottom line. And we're just going to pull lines at the 55 degree slant. And this is a good time to check if you are if you are able to pull these lines comfortably at this slant, or if you need to turn your paper some way or re readjust your paper position. 我们所做的第一个练习呢，是从我们的上面那条线拉一条直线到我们下面的那条线。我们要确保这条直线是和我们的斜度线平行的。如果你的线和你的你所拉出来的线和斜度线不平行呢，可能你需要把你的指向左
And final warm up is to start with the hairline, apply pressure in the center, and then release pressure at the end. So you get a swell stroke. And 下一个最后一个热身练习是我们游丝起笔，逐渐施力，在最中间的时候形成的是最粗的线条，然后再收力，啊，在。结尾的时候形成另一个游丝，这样的线条它的名字叫做 swell line。And I think we're ready to to start. 好，我们现在热身结束，可以正式开始了。Okay, I'm going to start by reviewing the basic strokes for minuscules. 嗯。开始呢，先来呃复习一下小写字母的基础笔画。So I'm going to draw my line again, even though I said I wouldn't, but just so that we can have a clear idea of how big these strokes are. 好，我们再呃重新画一条线条，这样，他 Nina 这样做是让我们能够更清楚的看到这些线和笔画都相对的位置在哪里。All right. So the basic strokes are: we have a straight line. Um, 我们的基础笔画是一条直线 And the straight line can be a hairline. It can be pulled down, or it can be pushed up. 这条游丝的直线呢，它是可以从上往下，也是可以从下往上的 It can also have pressure. 那直线呢，也可以是一条粗笔画 And when it has pressure, obviously you can only pull it downward. Ah,、uh, 当你写粗笔画的时候，只能从上往下进行 Another stroke is the crescent stroke or the oval stroke. Ah,、uh, 第二个基础笔画呢是啊、uh, 椭圆笔画或者说是星月笔画 And you have your direct oval, which is counterclockwise, and you have your indirect oval, which is Clockwise, and you could tell, see that the shade is on the opposite side. Uh, 对于这个椭圆笔画没有正椭圆，它是啊、uh, 逆时针的，和我们的逆椭圆它是顺时针方向的。这两个正椭圆和逆椭圆，它们的粗笔画所在的位置也不同。The third stroke is the underturn, and the underturn is actually a fusion. Of the straight stroke, it's half straight stroke and half curved stroke. So we start with the straight stroke, and then this part is the curved or crescent stroke. So this bottom part here is derived from the oval, and this is the underturn stroke. 第<咳>第三个基础笔画是我们的下转角，下转角是由两部分组成的，它的上半部分是我们第一个竖直的粗笔画，下半部分呢是我们的嗯顺椭圆的下半部分。I haven't mentioned it yet, but all of these shades should be at fifty-five degrees. 啊、嗯，所有的这些粗笔画，它的角度也是五十五度。The fourth stroke is the overturn. This is basically an upside. Or、uh, if you take the stroke and you flip it the other way, you get the shade. So basically, an upside down U with the shade on the right side. 我们下一个基础笔画是我们的上转角，上转角是我们下转角的，呃，一百八十度翻转，它的上半部部分是我们的逆时针椭圆，下半部分是我们的粗直的竖笔画。And this top part of the turn is the same as the top part of the turn of the indirect oval. 嗯，它的上半部分是和我们的。Uh, 逆椭圆的上半部分是一致的。嗯、And the fifth stroke is the compound curve, and it's basically a fusion of the overturn and the underturn. 
第五个基础笔画是我们的复合曲线，它是由我们的上转角和我们的下转角合并构成的。You could even say that the top part of this is an indirect oval, and this bottom part is a direct oval, and it has straight lines at the beginning and at the end. 你也可以这样理解，它的上半部分是我们的逆椭圆，下半部分是我们的顺椭圆，然后再加上两条笔直的游丝。And we're gonna get to the loop, but maybe we should wait until later. But uh, actually, maybe I should do it now because I don't know if I'll have time to explain it later. So I'm gonna draw some more lines. 嗯，接下来我们要说的笔画呢是我们的回环。Okay, the loop is actually it's that tapering. And this, this stroke uh, could be two spaces long. Sometimes people make it two and a half spaces long. It's really up to you. It depends on the exemplar that you're following. There are two ways to make the loop. The first way is to start with your pen on the waistline and push up a hairline stroke a curve, and then you come back down. And depending on your preference of the height for the height of the the stem stroke or the shaded stroke, you can either begin here or here. You can begin your shade at those points. 嗯，上回环它有两种写法。第一种写法是从腰线上游丝起笔，然后到达我们的第二上回环线之后向下，然后根据你的范本不同，你所嗯开始粗笔画的高度可以从二点五倍行高或者到两倍行高之间。And the, the second way to make a loop is to start with your shade stroke, and then you come back sort of towards the where, where there's the shade is thick, and you're going to push up the loop or the the hairline stroke to create your loop. 嗯，第二种写上回环的方法呢，是你先写粗笔画，然后从你粗笔画有墨水的地方啊、呃、往上，从上。And those are the basic strokes. There are six of them. And if you turn this one upside down, or if you start with this kind of a tapering shade instead, you can make your descending loop. So this is the ascending loop, and this is the descending loop. 嗯，当你把你的上回环翻转一百八十度之后呢，你就得到了你的下回环。下回环是从嗯、呃、腰线开始，嗯、呃、粗笔画起笔的。What you want to avoid with these loops is you want to avoid applying pressure immediately upon uh the downstroke. 写上回环的时候，你需要避免的是，啊、呃，你在你的游丝到达你的第二上回环线之后呢，立即施力变成粗笔画，这是我们所要避免的。It's much more graceful when you have some hairline here at the top, at least half of a space or a third of a space. 如果我们在呃回环的顶部。三分之一到二分之一行高的地方呢，让它变成一条游丝，这样我们的这个回环看起来会更加的优美一些。Okay, so those are the basic strokes, and now we can start some drills. 好，我们的基础笔画就讲到这里，接下来我们可以开始我们的控笔练习了。I am using the eight millimeter guide sheet for the minuscules, and when we get to the majuscules, we can do a smaller X side, but there, you want to start with a large X height because you want to be able to see all the details of your letters. And if you write too small, you can't really see all of those details. 
呃，我们对于小写字母的嗯基础笔啊、呃、控笔练习，所用的是八毫米横高的这样的练习纸。我们想要一开始，呃，我们希望能够把横高写的大一点，这样呢，我们可以对笔画上的每个细节都能看得更清楚。如果我们写的很小的话，那么所笔画上的细节我们可能会注意不到。The first drill that we're going to do is the Is an oval drill, and how wide you make your oval it depends on your personal preference. But if you're not sure about what your preference is, or if you want me to tell you what I would prefer, I would start with two squares on top of each other and then lean them to the fifty-five degree slant. 首先，你要决定你的椭圆的比例是多少。可能每个人对于椭圆的比例的偏好不一样。但是对我来说呢，我会啊、呃、把两个正方形叠在一起，然后啊、呃、然后再把它向右拉成五十五度的斜度，这样一比二的比例就是我我我比较喜欢的对于椭圆的比例。And your oval would fit in this, more or less. If it pokes out a little bit, I mean, it's it's not a big deal. But that's generally this a good size for the oval. 然后你的椭圆呢，可以正好大约，嗯、呃，能够，嗯、呃，在这个框框里。所以对我来说，这一比二的比例呢，是一个我比较喜欢的椭圆的比例。For the oval, you generally want to begin at the waistline. You don't want to begin your oval on the side and then work your way up. 嗯，椭圆我们比较希望是从腰线开始起笔，一般我们不在横高的中间起笔。And the reason for that is you will get the most consistent oval forms for all the letters that have the oval form if you begin each time here on the waistline. 嗯，这样做的原因呢，是我们在书写和椭圆相关的所有字母的时候呢，我们能够更容易的让每个字母之间都保持一致。There are letters like O, A, C, and all of these letters. Oh, and also E and D and G, etc. And all of these letters have the oval, and they all have this crescent shape. And so, when we begin them at the same place and same、uh, position or same location on the on the、uh, along the lines, then we are we can make them more consistently, as opposed to starting the A or the letter other letters in arbitrary positions. Maybe you start it here sometimes for the A. Maybe sometimes you start. Dot and then you make your O, or maybe same thing for the C. You start with your dot and then you make the C, or for the E, maybe you start with the loop. Then you, it's you're you're making the same shape, but you're making it from different places every time, and you're going to, you're more likely to make them inconsistently when you begin the same shape at different places. 嗯，是用那个椭圆起笔的字母有很多，比如说 A C E G D 这样。如果我们每个字母的起笔呢都在同一个位置进行，这样呢，我们的每个字母之间它的字形更能够保持一致。那、嗯、如果我们在 A C E 这样的字母每个字母起笔的位置都不一样，那么即使他们这些字母他们都有相同的这样椭圆的基础笔画，但是他们看起来呢也会会有一些不一致。So the first drill that we're going to do is we're going to practice making those ovals at the same place, which is on the waistline. 我们首先要的第一个控笔练习是从我们的腰线开始来写椭圆。And when you begin the ovals, you don't want to start with too much pressure right away. For instance, you don't want to do this applying pressure immediately. 我们在写嗯字母 O 或者说椭圆笔画的时候呢，我们要起笔从由丝开始，我们要避免的是呃从腰线开始就立即写出笔画。You should begin with a slight hairline 
and then you can apply pressure and then you want to release pressure and be a hairline before you reach the baseline. 这个椭圆的笔画呢，我们应该由丝起笔，然后逐渐的加粗我们的笔画，然后在逐渐的收力带我们抵达我们的基线的时候呢，它应该也是一条由丝。And maybe at first your ovals will be different shapes, and that's that's okay. This is part of the elimination process. It's the trial and error part, and you. You just have to keep going, but learn from your mistakes each time. So maybe each time that you make your oval, you get closer to your ideal one. 可能你一开始写的时候，你的椭圆大小啊，粗细可能都不一致，但是这没有关系。你可以在你的错误中去学习到啊，学习到你新的经验。然后当你逐渐写的时候，你可以达到你心中想要达到那个理想的椭圆。and I think I need to move a little faster with the drills or else we're never going to move past the minuscule. So uh, the next drill is to put, well, hopefully by this time, your ovals are looking pretty consistent in shape and size and your shades are all in the same place. Next, we're going to put them all, we're going to have them uh, practice kissing. So right now you have an oval. And you want to practice getting your second oval as close to this oval as possible. Um,我们在第一个练习到达，比如说你的椭圆都看起来大小都差不多，比例都差不多，你的粗线条的位置都差不多的时候呢，我们可以啊进行到第二个空笔练习。这个空笔练习叫做kissing，就是什么？你把你
And pay also attention to where they're kissing and keep in mind these negative triangle spaces. 同时你要注意的是,两个O他们所相切的位置也要保持一致,并且每一个O他们下面的三角形的大小也要保持一致。After this, uh, this exercise will not only help you develop the rhythm and the spacing between the shades, but it prepares you for this next part, which is an oval. And an underturn. And remember that the underturn is half straight stroke, and the bottom half is half oval. 这样我们就能进行下一个空笔练习了,就是写一个完整的椭圆,然后呢,它的第二部分上半部分是一个竖直的粗笔画,下半部分是我们椭圆的下半部分。And just like the kissing part, you need to anticipate where you begin the stroke, but because you started with the oval, you should be a pretty fam you should have a pretty good idea of where to begin this next stroke because this straight stroke is essentially a curved stroke with this corner part filled in. So at this point, we just made the letter A, which is an oval and an underturn. 现在你应该发现了，我们现在写的就是小写字母A，它是由一个椭圆和一个下转角下转角所组组成的。And what you want to happen is, if you cover this is a trick I learned from Dr. Joe, if you cover the top half. Sorry, my lamp is about to fall. If you cover the top half, you should not be able to tell which one is an underturn and which one is an oval. And this technique is from Dr. John. If you cover the top half with a pen and leave the top half open, you can't see which one is an underturn and which one is an oval. And you can't see which one is an underturn and which one is an oval. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the next drill. I'll do these ones a little bit more quickly because you could do them on your own. I'm sure some of you are curious about majuscule drills, so I want to make sure I, I get to those. Okay, for this next one, I'm going to turn my paper upside down and I'm going to draw an A, because I just did that. And then I'm going to turn my paper back to the correct position. And now I have a model. So for this next drill, I am going to start with an overturn, which is an upside down underturn, and then I'm going to draw a an indirect oval. So this oval is made in the opposite way that the direct oval is made. And you want to just string these together. All the while, you're keeping in mind the width of your oval. So now you've just made upside down A's.
And you want to do the same thing where you cover the bottom half and you should not be able to tell which one is an overturn and which one is the oval. 我们现在写的就是一个翻转的A,那如果你拿一张纸遮住它的下半部分呢,你应该不能够发觉那个上转角和逆椭圆之间两个笔画的差别,他们应该是看起来是一致的。So all of your curves and negative triangles should be identical. 你曲线的弧度和留白的三角形呢,都应该保持一致。Okay, so once you get a pretty good handle on this and you are satisfied, you can move on to this next drill. So I'm going to start with an upside down A like before. And uh, while keeping an eye on this counter space width, I'm going to draw two or three overturns. 然后我要注意的是，嗯，几个字母之间的间距要跟之前保持一致，然后写两三个上转角。And uh, then I'll just periodically insert an indirect oval in there to check if it's the right width. 然后在其中呢加一个逆椭圆，然后看一下我的间距是不是还是保持一致。And then I'm going to draw an overturn, and then I'm going to connect a compound curve here. And remember that the compound curve is half uh, overturn and half underturn. 然后我再写一个复合曲线。复合曲线呢,它的上半部分是我们的上转角,下半部分呢是下转角。Okay, and then from the middle of this, this compound curve, I'm going to branch out and draw two or three more overturns. And then I'm going to insert a compound curve. So compound curve, then overturn, overturn. Overturn and then compound curve again, or whatever sequence you want. But the idea here is you are maintaining that counter space with and the same curve, same triangle space, etc. 然后我们的练习就是写两三个上转角之后呢，接一个复合曲线，并且一直这样重复。这个练习的目的呢，是你要注意到你所有笔画之间的间距，嗯，你的嗯椭圆的弧度和你留白的三角形呢，都应该保持
my forearm downward and my hand, my fingers just kind of keep the keep the pen stable. 啊，由于这个笔画它很长，所以呢，我用的大多数是由由我的手臂向下带动，我的手指呢只是握住我的笔杆。The next part of this drill is a compound curve. So I'm going to. Here is my waistline. Here are my lines. I'm going to place my pen at about halfway, and I'm going to branch out and put a compound curve. 然后，在这个粗笔画的中间开始起笔，来写一个复合曲线。And I'm going to put my letter A right next to it. Because my A is already standardized, I are, have already practiced the width of this. Now I want to practice keeping that width inside of these counters as well. So, 然后我们再写一个字母 A， 因为对于字母 A 来说，我们的间距应该是已经保持一致了。我们在这边的练习呢，是要看我们的其他笔画的间距和我们的 A 的间距应该也是保持一致的。So here we are making the letter P and the letter A. So 这边我们写的就是字母 P 和字母 A. And a common mistake for this drill is to make This part either too thick or too thin. So oftentimes I will see this. This practice, this practice, one common mistake is that we write too thin on our letter. 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 We write too Being either collapsed here, where it's made too skinny, or made too wide. 另一个常见错误呢，是我们 P 的这个复合曲线写的与它的粗笔画写的过近，或者是它的距离与别的嗯笔画的距离过宽。So you want to keep all of this space the same distance. 我们应该使这这边的所有的间距都应该保持一致。And the final drill that we're going to do is we're going to practice the stem loop. 嗯，最后一个练习呢，我们是要练习我们的嗯、呃、大写字母的笔画。Well, we'll need three spaces as well, but the X. Height, oops, is at the bottom. 好，我们的那个 x height 是在我们的最下面的这一个。这个练习也是占三个。We're going to start with our beloved A that we are probably best friends with by now. 我们先从我们的好朋友 A 开始写。Okay, this A.、Uh, after this A, let's draw some underturns. 写完 A 之后呢，写两个下转角。And then let's draw another A. 然后再写一个 A. And I want you to just. Roughly eyeball. So these are your underturns here. Your underturn has at the very top has two corners. It has a right corner and a left corner. I want you to draw a line or just estimate a line. It could be dotted or solid. Draw a line, um, a fifty-five degree line along the left edge of your your、um. underturn. So, 我们要我们要在我们的下转角的左边的那个三角形这边啊，向上沿着我们五十五度的斜度线画一条直线，跟它这条粗笔画的左边这条线对齐
And the, these lines are, well, if let's, if they were not there and they were imaginary, they, they would confine the loop that we're about to make between these lines. So when you practice your loop, you're going to start with your stroke here on the left corner. We're going to practice making a loop that is this wide. So already we are constraining ourselves between this line and this line. We're going to start here on the left corner. We're going to push up a curve and you can either touch it or, well, I would try not to touch it. I think I drew this too wide. But you make a loop, and this curve is going to touch about halfway between these two lines. Uh, uh, Wanting and then for the next part, we're going to draw a curve from the halfway point between the first and the second ascender line. Here, this is a curve. And then this last part is going to be that's stroke that starts with the as a hairline and then we apply pressure. And what you want about what you want with this loop is let me draw it again and then I'll talk about it. You just draw your loop. And you want this to be more or less equal on both sides. So if you drew a line through it, it's bisected by that line. So when you do this with a pointed pen, you start here for this practice. Oops. You start here on the left corner and you push up. And just think about that shape. And then when you reach the halfway point, after you make the curve, you can begin to apply pressure. So when we use the pencil, we will start from the left side, and then we will make a curve. When we write it, we will only think about what we just discussed, the two-dimensional shape. And when we reach the end, we will start at the left side, and then we will start to apply pressure to the left side, and then we will start to apply pressure to the left side. And the width of this loop is the same width as the counter space of the A. And Okay, so that gives you the idea, an idea of how wide to make the loop. Now we need to put it into practice. So we're going to start with the A again. 我们分析了这个回环的结构之后，现在可以正式开始写了。我们先从A起笔。For making the ascender loop, usually I will, I will make the exit stroke instead of stopping here at the halfway point between the baseline and the waistline. I'm going to go all the way up to the waistline. 嗯，写回环的时候呢，我会从腰线开始起笔。and from here, I'm just going to have, this is the trial and error part of practice, where I'm going to just try to keep in, in mind this width and also this angle at which I can't go up. And I'm just going to also pray to the calligraphy gods. And then from this 
you are going to draw your curve. And then remember, don't apply pressure until you pass or are at around that point. So once I pass this point, I can begin to apply pressure. And as I come down, I'm going to pull this shade on the 55 degree slant. And when I come up, I'm going to think only about the underturn. And this underturn, this all needs to be the same width. 从零点开始向下,这一格的二分之一的地方呢,是要保持游丝,我们不应该立即就写出笔画,然后再写一个逐渐加粗的这么一个笔画,到达我们的腰线之后,腰线下面的部分呢,我这时候脑海中想的就是
Okay, so this is my exemplar and uh, I've already written on it, but, uh, and, and the exemplar that I sent you already has some of those lines. So the next step is trying to figure out what, which letters are alike and some of the lessons will tell you which group the, so you can, instead of learning the alphabet from A to Z, you should learn it in groups. And这个是我的范本，在你们的讲义当中也已经发给你们，上面是有线的。然后学习大写字母的时候呢，我们不要从A、B、C这样顺序写，我们应该按照嗯嗯字母之间相似的来进行分组，按照一组一组的这样进行
And it's, it just, it goes on. There are so many things that we could look at, right? Like the loop here on the C and the loop here on the G. And once you start paying attention to these little details, then, then you can start to do drills. But if you don't understand the proportions of the letters and how they're related to each other, it's really hard to do drills because the drills are supposed to help you improve your letters, but you kind of have to know what part of the letter you need to improve. It's like going to the gym and just wanting to work out. But usually when you go to the gym, there's there's a specific workout. Maybe you want to work out your arms or your legs, or maybe you're working on a six pack. So there are certain exercises that are going to help you develop those muscles. 再举一个例子，比如说这边的小回环，他们其实也是比较相似的。你应该先理呃理解到大写字母当中，他们有哪些相似的笔画，然后你做控笔练习的时候，你的控笔练习才能够帮助到你提高你的这些笔画。就好比
对于这个练习呢，已经有一些熟悉之后呢，我们可以开始在向下的笔画中上施加一些压力。And then, just ever so gradually, we are going to start adding a small curve at the top and at the bottom of the swell stroke. 好，慢慢的，我们可以在这个笔画当中呢，加一点点的一个曲线的曲度。Just a little curve. 啊、uh, ，可以加一点点的曲线。<laughs> and you want your shade to be concentrated in the center. You don't want it to be beginning here and then tapering off, and you don't want it to be concentrated on the bottom. Ah,、uh, 我们要使我们的阴影。使我们的粗笔画呢，啊、呃，最粗的地方保持一致，最好他们的粗笔画都是在中间。嗯，我们不应该是在有的粗笔画呢，它最粗的地方在上面或者在下面，他们应该都保持在同一个位置。And again, make sure that your shade is at fifty-five degrees. 然后你的粗笔画的角度应该是五十五度。And then just gradually add more curve to the top and to the bottom. Then we gradually increase these curves. Then we add more curve to What you want to avoid is you want to avoid applying pressure too soon and releasing pressure too late. So avoid this. We want to avoid applying pressure too soon and releasing pressure too late. So avoid this. We want to avoid applying pressure too soon and releasing pressure too late. So avoid this. We want to avoid applying pressure too soon and releasing pressure too late. So you want to start each downstroke with a little hairline before you apply pressure, and you want to release pressure before you reach the baseline. We every time we write this painting, we should have a little hairline at its top. And you actually need all of these different kinds. Of capital stems, you need the ones I call these ones narrow, where there's a narrow curve, narrow, and then you have some that are wider, where the shade, the distance from the shade and the end of your stroke, is wider. So I'm going to mark those with a W for wide, and N for narrow. Um, 对于这些。嗯、呃，这个笔画的不同形态呢，在我们的大写字母当中都会用到。比如说，这个是比较它的间距比较窄的，是我们的一个比较窄的笔画啊、呃。或者还有，我们也会用到它的那个宽，嗯，间距比较宽的这个笔画，在大写字母中都会用到。And so the the stroke that you need depends on what letter. So for instance, if you have a W, let me go over here. If you have a W, you will need Y. Ah,、uh, sorry, narrow capital stems. 比如说，在我们写大写字母 W 的时候呢，我们需要写这个比较窄的这个笔画，复合曲线的笔画。But if you have a B, you're going to need a wide capital stem. So a B has more hairline. At the beginning and at the end, then the W, which has a short hairline or short,、uh, yeah, short hairline. 
。嗯，大写字母 B 呢，我们就需要一个比较宽的啊、呃、这个复合曲线。嗯，比较宽的复合曲线，它的头尾的游丝的部分会更多一些；比较窄的复合曲线呢，它头尾的游丝部分呢会少一些。And in some cases, you'll have a letter that has both wide and narrow parts. So here on the H, you start with the narrow part, and then you have a wide bottom. 有些字母呢，它可能是呃。比如说像 Y 这个字母，它就是起笔的部分呢是比较窄的复合曲线，收笔的地方是比较宽的复合曲线。So you need to be able to do both. 我们应该两种笔画呢都要会写。Okay, and the final drill that I'll show you, and and then I'll take questions, is the O. So for the O,、um, the size of your O is going to be proportional to the size of your minuscule O. 嗯，大写字母的 O 呢，是应该和我们小写字母 O 的比例是应该相似的。So think about. What size your minuscule O is? Because what you're going to do is you're going to take this O and you're going to stack three of them on top of each other along the 55 degree slant. 大写字母 O 的比例呢，是应该是小写字母的 O 沿着斜度线可以向上叠，一共三个。And then we're going to stack two. On the side of the middle oval. 然后在左右呢，又可以再加一个小写的 O. And you want this to all be the same size, obviously. And if you wrap a larger oval around it, this is the size of your capital O. 然后你把它的外围呢连起来，这就是你的大写 O 的一个尺寸。So when I make an O, I need to keep the minuscule O in mind because I need to be able to fit three ovals inside. 那我的大写字母的 O 呢，中间应该是可以放下我三个小写 O. So this oval does not match this oval, and this oval. Does not match this oval. 嗯、uh, ，如果你的大小写字母跟屏幕上写的这样呢，那么这样你的大小写字母 O 的比例呢是嗯不啊不不相互呼应的。And nobody's going to come to your house and measure all this stuff, but you know it's nice to have a, a cohesive family. 嗯，但并不是说有人会用尺来量你的字母，但是如果你的比例呢是相一致、相似的话，这样会看起来更美观一些。All right, so the final drill that I'm going to share, we're going to need three spaces, and we are going to start with a hairline capital O. So don't apply any pressure, just 我们先写一个大写的 O， 占三格，呃，是全全部都是游丝，不要加粗笔画。And then for this next stroke, we're going to overlap an oval here, and I'm going to place a, a dotted line along the 55 degree slant right next to that O. 好，然后我们在这个 O 的右边。和画一道跟斜度线相平行五十五度的线。And then I'm going to begin my next oval here, where that fifty-five degree slant is, and where this second ascender line is. 然后我们在第第二个 O 的起笔呢，是在屏幕所示的这个点的位置，在五十五度线的顶端和我们的第二回环线相交的地方。And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the same size oval here. I think I'll just practice with 
a hairline oval. I'm going to make this oval the same size as the first one, or as best as I can. 然后写一个和左边的这个 O， 嗯的大小一样的另一个 O。And once I feel pretty comfortable making my O, I'm going to start applying shade. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to start with the hairline. And as I draw closer to this previous O, I'm going to start applying pressure. 然后再写一个 O 呢？当我这个 O 和我之前的这个油丝的 O 相交的时候，我开始写我的粗笔画。So you don't have to keep drawing the dotted line, but if it helps you, you can do it. So you want to keep as much of the shade inside of the previous O. You don't want to do this. So our all of our fine line drawing is in the previous O's shade. We want to avoid drawing on the previous O's shade in the previous O's shade in the previous O's. And as you exit the O, you're also a hairline. So enter as a hairline and exit as a hairline. So when we go back to the O, 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 when we Okay, and that's that's pretty much all the drills. I want to save some time for Q and A. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. Let me check. I guess people are busy practicing their drills. Oh, that's good. Some some time. And if you have any questions, if you are in the CC Talk, you can send me a message on my WeChat account because I have no way to share the screen. If you have any questions, you can send me a message on my WeChat account. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave in the chat. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave in the chat. Could you show us where you got the exemplars? Yes, I got them from the Zenarian.com website. Do you want me to show you exactly where? I can show you, it's no problem, since there are no questions. I just tapped the website in, in the chat. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. I'm glad we can only cover so much in such a little time. But I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Olivia, can I share my screen real quick? You need my. I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is Zenarian.com. And if you go up here at the top, there is a button that says lessons, or you could scroll to calligraphy and penmanship lessons. And when you click there, you're going to get this screen. And these are the different names of the penmen. And you could just click on anyone and you will have uh, some instructions here that you can read. Or you can click on this and it'll, there's always stuff to read as well, but it'll give you exemplars. And some give you drills. Look at these drills. I wasn't making them up. They, uh, somebody had already thought of it. So um, you could just go through this whole thing and just click one by one. This is the first one that I showed you. This is Joseph Galterio. And again, it gives you these basic exercises or an exemplar. 
嗯，在 Zoom 当中有同学问范本怎么找，然后 Nina 呢现在是给我们展示，呃，在那个 Zenaria Menu 点 com 这个网址当中，怎么样你点这个 Lesson 或者点下面的人名呢，就可以看到每一个不同书法家他们的一些范本，还有他们对于英文书法的一些练习。And that's where I get my exemplars. And we have another question. And your pen looks like it is tilted to the right and not flat. Um, tilted to the right and not flat. Ah,、uh, yes. My pen is. Let me remove the ink. 嗯、呃，有一个问题是问说，妮娜她的笔尖是向右转，并不是和纸面平行的。然后妮娜会解释她为什么这么设，这样调她的笔尖啊。So my pen is adjusted so that it's it's already slanted. 嗯，他的这个法兰呢是已经是。Uh, um, and when I hold my pen, let me get in closer. I'm actually going to draw a slant line right here. And when I hold my pen, first off, I I want I want it so that my My pen is more or less along this fifty-five degree slant. 首先，它的笔尖是应该和斜度线保持平行。And I tilt my pen a little bit to the right, like this. So you were right in observing that. 对，然后它的笔呢是往右稍微转一点点。If you hold your pen flat and you place your pen on the red line and you apply pressure. Both tines open up. 如果你的笔尖和你的呃斜度线平行，然后你向下施力的话，你的笔尖是平均的向左右两边张开的。If you turn your pen, uh, to the left, and you place it on the red line, and you apply pressure. The right tine opens, and the left one stays on the red line. 如果你的笔尖向左转一点，然后向下施力的话，你的笔尖的左半边是在原地不动，然后你的右半边的笔尖是向外张开的。And what you want is you want to turn your pen a little bit to the right, and so that when you apply pressure. The left tine opens, and the right one stays on the red line. And what's really happening when you apply pressure is the left tine stays relaxed, and the right tine is the one that flexes. 嗯，如果你的笔尖向右转的话呢，向下施力的时候，你的右半边的笔尖是不动，左半边是张开的。So that's what you want. Is that is that helpful? So is that the way you make your flat top? Yes, yes, that's the way I make the flat tops. Yes. So, so 这样呢，就更你能够更容易的写出啊、uh, 平切的这样一条线。So this blue line marks my right tine. 这个蓝色这条线是它笔尖的右半边。And this pink one marks my left tine. So, 红色的呢是它笔尖的左半边 So, if I start my stroke here, on this corner, and I apply pressure, I'm going to get that squared top. And then I pull, and then when I get to, the, remember that it's my. My right tine is flexed, and my left one is relaxed. Right. So if I'm here, and I release pressure, sorry, my nib is stuck to the paper. Oop.、Uh, when I get when I get down here, 
and I release pressure, my right tine closes to the left and I get a square bottom. Uh, uh, 这样你再往上向下 打到你极限的时候，你收力的话，你右边的笔尖会向左收拢，这样呢，你又能嗯写出一个平的角。I had to draw another one because there was a hole on my paper and my nib was getting stuck. So here, and when you get to the bottom, release pressure, and the left tine, a uh, right tine will snap shut as it relaxes. 好，这样这个就是妮娜怎么样。他的那个握笔的姿势和他如何写出他的平头和平尾的。Okay, we have another question about show the shade in the compound curve, a rounded shade. The rounded shade? Um, should the shade... Okay, I'm scrolling up so I can see it. Is it from Dillis, right? Yes. Should the shade and the compound curve be a rounded shade? Great question. It depends on how thick your stroke is. So it's, you can see it in two ways, right? It can be seen as half of a circle and half of a, a circle shade. Um, but if you're making, this is if it's a really wide stroke. If it's more narrow, then probably it'll be more like this, where it's more straight in the middle. And then you have only a little bit of curve at the bottom. So it depends on how uh, thick your shade is, Dillis. So it's it does have some round parts at the top and at the bottom. Yes. Is that Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. And we have two similar questions about uh, um, the turn, the rounded turn, and uh, uh, the difference between copper plate and engrosser script. Okay. Um, where is the other one? Is on CC talk. It is. It asked the. Uh, your turn is a, a bit rounded compared to engrosser script. Is it oh, yes. a, a style of yours or it depends on different exemplar? And that one is about what's the difference between these two? Okay, so um, the difference is, so think of engrosser script and I'm gonna use David Grimes's term. What he, what he defines in grosser script as being modular. So uh, modular meaning that instead of one stroke like this, he, he does one, the shade is one module and the hairline is another module. So this is two separate parts. Whereas I guess a, a more loose term like copper plate or English round hand, this is done in one stroke. So that's the first difference is that this is one and this is two. And the second difference is the straightness. And again, I'm using David Grimes's um, terms or, or definition here where the, the parts have some kind of angularity angularity to them. So let me draw that here on the bottom. So this is more of a loose, less serious copper plate style. And this is more of an engrosser script style. Nina现在他引用David uh, Grimes的对于ES的定义 首先ES这个问题是关于ES和English uh, Longhand 或铜板体 ER他们有什么不同 然后跟那个同学在那个CC Talk上面问到的 关于转角圆润的问题他们可以归为同一类首先他提到David Grimes对于ES的定义是一个比较模块化的字体 模块化的定义呢，就是它的每一个。
，一个笔画就是一个模块组。比如说像这个椭圆，如果用 E R 或者铜板体的字体的写法，它是一笔构成的。然后用 E R 的话呢，它是分为两笔。然后这是他们的第一个不同。第二个不同呢是关于转角的。好，现在妮娜在说转角的事情。<咳> And the second definition that David Grimes uses is that it has these angular interior angles. 对，第二个不同是，呃、uh, ，David Grimes 他对于 ES 的定义呢，是他的，呃、uh, ，转角的内部是有角度的。Whereas something like copper plate, it's more rounded, like you noticed. So it's more rounded. 所以铜板体的话呢，它转角会比较圆润一点。Is that is that good? Oh, and、uh, just just the ductus sometimes is also different. So sometimes, not all the time, it really you can't be too serious about what things are called because somebody might consider this in grocery script,、uh, but this would probably be the most. This is a more formal. Uh, style of copper plate. So in grocery script is a form of copper plate. It's just more formal. It's more slowly written, and、uh, yeah. Um, 可能 Nina 建议大家对不要对于那个字体的名称嗯过于介意，因为可能有的人会把铜板。会把 ES 看作是正式的铜板体，但有的人可能也会觉得这个铜板体稍微圆润一点字也是 ES 的一种，所以对于那个就是名称的定义，其实也不用过于在意。Does that answer your question? And Ekta,、uh, do you have question, Ekta? I saw you, you raise a hand. Here's the thought、um, about it. Raise your head. Five years in the making. Sorry, that's、Did、my. Did someone、story. say something? Okay. So,、uh, hi, Nina. I have a question.、Uh, if we go back to the AAA drills, so there、uh, you marked one by four somewhere. So I couldn't keep up with that. Like, what was that? <clears throat> Like af、uh, after the、uh, practicing kissing line. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find my papers. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I can find it. Okay. Uh, here. Which? Yeah. Which? Uh, the next line after the kissing one, or、uh, like practicing kissing. So here, like there, there you have. Ah,、uh, yeah, this line. Yes. So, like,、okay. what is that one for?、Uh, you have marked the board. Ah,、oh, ah,、oh, okay. Hold on, let me get my guide sheet. Ah, this question is asking, is in the kissing after the kissing line. That practice, this practice, it has a meaning. What is it? Practice what part? Okay, so I that quarter, that one quarter was just referring to、uh, the open oval. So here's the closed oval. And we were initially just kissing ovals, and they were always closed. And then for the next exercise, I said we're going to leave the next oval open. So we made the oval, and I said we're going to leave it a quarter of a space, a quarter open. So this would be three quarters, and this part that's missing is a quarter. Okay, got it. 
这个问题问的是这个四分之一是什么意思？所以妮亚解释了一下，说四分之一是你这个空出来的这个部分是这个椭圆的四分之一。Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, is the majuscule O size the same size for all the majuscules? Is the majuscule O size the same size for all majuscules? Um, all majuscules. They're, they're all based on that O, yes. So let me get this. So when you have a capital... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. 嗯，这个问题问的是大写字母 O 的大小是不是和所有的其他的大写字母的大小要保持一致 ？So this oval here is should be about the same size as this. Only this one here is also missing the quarter, right? It's missing this part, so it looks smaller than the whole oval. Um, and in in some cases, this one here is uh, D is is a special case because we can well I'll I'll tell you about that after Olivia translates. 嗯<咳>，就是这个 C 的话，它的大小是和 O 啊、呃、C 所在椭圆的大小是和 O 一样，但是有别的字母，它们可能的大小和这个 O 的大小不一致。比如说这个大写的 D。So this part of this whole、uh, outer part of the D is actually more circular than oval. 嗯，这个 D 所在的椭圆跟 O 所在的椭圆相比呢，它会更圆润一些。And there, there are so many variations to the D that I had to make up my own rule about how to make it. 嗯，对于 D 呢，不同的人他写的方式有非常多的不同的变种，所以 Nina 她有一个对于 D 的自己的一个理解。And to be honest with you, that's what all letters are. They're just a bunch of rules made up by one person. That's why it's so different from person to person because I have my own rules, and、uh, Paul Antonio has his own rules. David Grimes has his own rules. Suzanne Cunningham, Young Hee Chang, everybody has their own set of rules. So if you ever take a class from all of us, We're going to be contradicting each other because we make the letters differently based on our preference. 嗯，每个书法家他对于字母的理解不同，然后他自己的对于字母的规则和定义也会不一样。所以这就是为什么会有很多不同的书法家他们字形不一样，然后有很多不同的范本。所以您看这边讲的呢，是他对于这个字母他的理解和他自己的制定的一些规则。And so. For you, you have your own set of rules because you have your own preference. So for me, all of the rules that I have, I took from different penmen. I took it from Galtério, I took it from Zayner, I took it from Lepper, I took it from all of these people. I just took parts that I liked that made sense to me, and I applied it to my copper plate. And so my copper plate. Is really a fusion of all of these different penmen. I just took my favorite parts. Nina, 对于铜板体的理解呢，是它是从各呃各个不同书法家那里得来的。他会于对于不同书法家的不同字母选取他喜欢或者对于他他来说最能够理解的部分，然后再变成他自己的东西，形成他自己的理论。And that's why learning copper plate is so confusing because there's so many options. And in the beginning, it's almost like you have to force yourself to select one thing to copy. And once you get the the main idea of how it's made, then you can start pulling inspiration or ideas from other penmen. 嗯，所以学习铜板体来说呢是比较难的，就是可能一开始你选择一个范本来去学习，但是当你对这个字母有了基本的概念之后呢，你可以汲取不同的书法家啊、呃，从他们的身上汲取他们的长处和你喜欢的部分，来形成自己的理论。There's no one. There are 
as many ways as there are penmen. 啊，所以每个书法家都是不一样的。对于这个铜板体来说，可能有千万种的不同的形态。还有没有别的问题呢 ？There's one by Tina. Did I miss any questions? Or do anyone have more questions for Nina? I can't promise I have answers, but I'll try. Can you do what Cap and? Sure. Cap and is a challenge one. Okay, for the capital N, you can start with the hairline part, and you can start the hairline part either here near the baseline. Sorry, let me clean my, my pen because it's it's already dried up. 大写 N 呢，我们从游丝开始起笔，起笔的地方。Okay, you can start with the. I always start with the curve. I put the dot at the end, so I start with a curve, and it comes up as a straight line that is parallel to the fifty-five degree slant. From 曲线由丝开始起笔，然后这一部分呢是和五十五度斜平行的一条直线。And then the second part, I need to draw a shade stroke. So I can I have two options for drawing the shade. I can either turn my paper and then draw my shade, or I can push my elbow away from my body. So here is me with my elbow at the regular position, and then when I push my elbow out, notice how it changes my pen angle. 嗯，写粗笔画呢有两种方式，第一种方式是把我们的纸转一下，第二种方式呢是把我们的手肘从身体的内部向外移。And so for me, I don't. It's turning my paper is too much work, and I am pretty lazy, so I'm just going to push my elbow out, and I'm going to put a narrow capital stem. 吉妮娜她比较喜欢的方式是把手肘向外移，然后写一个比较窄的复嗯大写复合曲线。And then I tuck my elbow back to regular position, and then I push up a straight stroke, and then a curved stroke. 然后再把手肘收回来，由丝起笔写一个直线，然后最后以曲线收尾。And then I'll come back and I'll draw my terminal dot. 然后最后呢，再加上这个点。And you kind of have to, you have to make mistakes when you're practicing, when you're learning. It's it's like trying to ride a bike or a skateboard or ski or whatever it is. You're gonna fall down, and so you might as well just when you when you sign up to learn something, you have to make mistakes. You can't avoid it. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable trying to make it perfect. So we learn a lot through trial and error. 所以，写书法呢，我们是从不断的试错中来学，呃，来选择到我们正确的方式，并不是一蹴而就的。我们可能会写一些比较跟我们想象中不一样的这个字形，就如现在屏幕所示。但是，我们从这些错误的字字母中呢，我们会学习到正确的方式。So try it. Try. Tucking your elbow, try turning your paper. You have to find your own method for doing it, and once you do it enough, you're gonna just you're just gonna know. It's like you don't even have to think about it. How far you just know, but it takes 
time and you need to study your exemplar to figure out how long, how wide do you need to make the N. And so when you take your exemplar, you could even take a ruler and you could figure out, okay, what is the distance between this hairline and this hairline? And then you could figure out, uh, it's, right now it's, oh, I'm just gonna estimate, it's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to find something else that's about a quarter of an inch. That's a little bit less, maybe. Okay, there, I found, oops, sorry. I found something that's about a quarter of an inch. So now I can say, oh, okay. The width of the bottom of my B is the same as the width of my N. And I can make that relationship, but you need to have an exemplar in order to be able to tell how wide to make this, because this is the width of this is somehow related to some other letter. You just need to figure out what letter that is. 当你写这个字母的时候呢，你要自己去试才能找到适合你的方法。嗯，比如说移动手肘啊，或者是转指，你要自己不断的尝试之后才知道哪个方法对你来说是最适用的。然后在你研究你的那个范本的时候，你可以